Hi, and welcome to this section of the Physics 3 Tutor. And in this section, we're going to tackle the topic of what we call the electric dipole. And specifically, what we're going to be learning about is the electric field due to an electric dipole. Now, again, in physics, there are lots of times when you have words and definitions that make the concept seem like it's going to be really difficult. Electric dipole is one of those concepts. I mean, just break it down. What do you think the word dipole might mean? Well, what is the word, you know, the prefix di mean generally, like diatomic molecule, for instance, or uh, there's probably a million examples, but generally that prefix means the number two. So what we're going to be learning about here is going to involve two of something. And uh, now pole, that part I'd have to look into the history of, but dipole, just uh, electric dipole, just simply means that what we're going to have is we're going to learn about the system that we've been drawing on the board for two sections now, and that's just a little system of of uh, when you have a positive charge and a negative charge separated by a distance. Uh, so we've been drawing these electric fields for a long time now and we're going to be learning a little bit more detail about why that configuration is important and some of the results that come about from it and it's not really difficult. So let me give you a little bit of motivation as to why we would pick that system out of thin air and learn about it. But what we're going to basically have, the electric dipole is basically uh, very simple. You have a positive charge here and you have a negative charge here. And this charge, you can call it Q, and this charge you can call it negative Q. So they're equal and opposite, uh, they're equal and opposite uh, charges. So that's the definition of a dipole. You can't have 5Q up here and negative 2Q down here. That wouldn't be a dipole. It has to be symmetrical. You have to have same number of coulombs that's positive over here and the negative uh, charge would have to be the same number of coulombs but negative. And these guys are separated by some distance, and we will call that distance D, right? And so these things right here, knowing what the charge is, the positive charge and the negative charge, equal and opposite, and knowing that they're separated by a distance D, uh, that defines what we call a dipole. And the reason that we learn about it is because these systems, these really simple systems that we've been learning about actually in the last section, even though you, I didn't, never told you that, um, they're, they, they pop up in nature. And so We'll draw some electric fields in a minute, but just to refresh your memory, you know that the electric fields are always going to originate on the positive charges and they're going to go down and terminate on the negative charges. So you're going to have a bunch of electric fields lines coming around, terminating here. Up above, you're going to have some electric field lines going away, and down below, you're going to have some electric field lines going in to this charge and away from this one. We drew these pictures in the last section extensively. So what we're going to do is learn about this in a little bit more detail and let me give you a little bit of motivation why you should care because actually it's really interesting. Remember back from your chemistry, water, the molecule water, H2O, right? Two hydrogen molecules uh, or atoms and one oxygen atom and they're bound up in this thing that we call a molecule. Now what causes them to be bound together. Now I'm not a chemist but my basic understanding of that is that you've got these atoms situated very near one another and the electrons from the atoms are become shared among those among those different atoms and that kind of binds it together, right? So basically the electron cloud that's around the hydrogen atoms and the oxygen atom when you bring them in this close uh, proximity and, and, and mash them together into what we call a molecule, the electron sharing begins to take place and so that's what causes it to be bound uh, together into this unit that we call a molecule and of course we have oceans full of this stuff, water, rain comes from the sky, it's a very stable arrangement of atoms, very stable arrangement of this electron sharing because water is so prevalent, uh, right? You can change phases and, and do all of these things. Now it turns out that water, if you remember from your chemistry, is what we call a polar molecule. We're not going to get into the chemistry here, but all that basically means is you can sort of imagine these atoms that are close together and the electrons of the atoms are being shared. In other words, instead of the orbits, quote unquote orbits, going around the individual atoms, they begin to become shared and sort of mingle with the other atoms in the vicinity there to make that unit that we call a molecule up. Now, most of the time, for most molecules, this sharing occurs in such a way that the, the molecule as a whole is still neutral. I mean, that's, that's the whole point. The atoms are neutral, meaning they have equal number of protons and electrons, so they're a neutral entity. And so when you come together and form most molecules, those molecules are neutral things as well. The electrons are shared, but everybody's happy because everyone gets to share all of the electrons, and so you still have a neutral molecule left over. But water... Um, and if you have 